What's up guys and welcome to the We Want Picks YouTube channel. I'm Artem MMA Analysis here, going to be talking about the Contender Series 2022, Week 2. I'm really looking forward to this card and I think it's going to be a great one. But before I give my predictions and talk about the card, I thought I'd better just introduce myself a little bit because you may not be familiar with me because this is my first time making a video for the We Want Picks YouTube channel. Of course, I'm a little bit nervous, but let's talk about myself. So I've been working with We Want Picks over the last few months or so, creating written content for their blog. If you guys are unfamiliar with that, we have a blog on the We Want Picks uh, channel. And I've been writing articles for them about Dana White's Contender Series and about Road to UFC as well, which is pretty awesome in my opinion. I'm very grateful that, for that opportunity, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to now be making videos about Contender Series 2022. You may have noticed there was no Contender Series 2022 Week 1 predictions, but I did notice, and we did notice, that you guys were asking for them. So now, uh, as I'm very passionate about Dana White's Contender Series, I am going to be making some prediction videos over the next few weeks for Contender Series 2022. So I hope that you guys enjoy it. Just to talk about my Contender Series 2022 Week 1 picks, though, I did go 3-1. and one. I picked Alessandro Costa to win. I picked Dennis Bazooka to win. I picked Anton Turcales to win. But I did pick Ozzy Diaz to win, and he unfortunately did lose the main event. But Joseph Pfeiffer, man, what a performance from him. In fact, it was so good that Dana White was literally telling the other fighters to be like Joseph Pfeiffer. Fight like Joseph Pfeiffer. So, that's pretty cool. Um, good for him, but uh, just a little bit more of an introduction to myself. I do have my own YouTube channel, Artem MMA Analysis, and I am from New Zealand. So you may notice that I've got a little bit of a different accent to uh, the other guys that you see on the channel. But it's from because I'm from New Zealand, so I've got a little bit of a funny accent. So hopefully you guys don't mind that too much. I don't usually like wasting too much time in my intro, so this is almost about two minutes. So let's just get into the first fight I'm going to be talking about. Francis Marshall versus Connor Matthews. And as we move on to the first fight, we've got Francis Marshall versus Conor Matthews, two undefeated 5-0 prospects at 145. And the truth is, I feel like both of these guys are just a little bit unproven to me. They're both undefeated, but they're both undefeated against not the highest level of competition. They both haven't fought a guy that is UFC level yet, in my opinion. If we look at Francis Marshall's wins, this is his record here. He has beaten a guy that was 4-0. In his debut, which is a great win, but since then he beat a debuting guy, a guy that was 3 and 2, 24 and 30, 7 and 6, and now he faces Connor Matthews. On the other hand, we've got Connor Matthews, who debuted against a guy that was 0 and 7, and then he beat Rob Fuller, who was 1 and 8, 2 and 1, Jay Ellis, who was 15 and 97, I believe Jay Ellis has more than 100 losses at the time of recording the video, and Josh Hardy, who was 1 and 2. So the truth is, you know, both of these guys, in my opinion, just haven't faced a guy that has tested them yet. You know, they haven't faced a guy that is UFC level or has proven to me that they are ready to make it into the UFC. So I feel like this fight is a really big test for both guys to really prove themselves to maybe someone like me who is just kind of looking at them and looking at their record and thinking about kind of what's going on. But Conor Matthews, I believe, is the guy that has looked a lot more impressive in his wins. If you look at his record, man, he debuted with a 7-second knockout over Stacey Anderson, and then he submitted Rob Fuller with a neck crank 57 seconds into the first round, another 57 seconds into the first round submission over Joshua Mara, defeated Jay Ellis in the first round, defeated Josh Hardy in the first minute. You know, we haven't seen much out of Conor Matthews because all of his wins have been so early into the first round. I believe if you add all of the time together, I don't even think you get a round out of all of his professional fights, which is crazy to me, which is cool. Like, it's very good. Like, he's beating this level of competition in a way that you would expect him to, but he hasn't faced someone that's actually tested him yet because he's just defeating them so quickly. They're not able to, 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 um, to test him in any way, but... Francis Marshall, on the other hand, you know, we've seen a lot more out of this guy because he's got a wrestling-heavy style. He also holds four submission wins on his record, all of them by rear naked choke. The first one come over the debut in, no, in his debut, sorry, over Keith Ferrant, who was 4-0. A rear naked choke at the very end of the fight. And then he took Michael Lawrence to the third round and a, a rear naked choke in the third round as well. But what I do like out of him is he's got an undefeated uh, amateur record and he's never been defeated even as an amateur. And as an amateur, he did fight a couple of good fighters. Nakia Brown was 7-1 and one as an amateur at the time. Damon Vincent was 4-0 and oh as an amateur at the time as well. So I guess that's a pretty good look there. But my prediction for this fight and how I think that the fight plays out is Conor Matthews is such a fast starter. You know, he's such a fast starter. He finishes all of his fights in the first round. Every single fight that he has won has been in 2 minutes, 21 seconds or less. 
but I I do feel like this fight is going to last a little bit longer than that. I think that Francis Marshall has the wrestling and grappling advantage out of the two here. I think that Conor Matthews has more finishing ability, and he has proven that. But I think the wrestling and grappling advantage goes to Francis Marshall. I think that he's going to lean on that pretty early. I don't think he's going to try and deal with Conor Matthews' super, start, super fast start here. I think Francis Marshall is going to try and shoot for takedowns and clinch up quite early, survive the first round, and then maybe we see what kind of happens from there. Because Conor Matthews, he's been to the second round once in his career, and that was in an amateur, and he lost that fight. So maybe Francis Marshall was looking at that and maybe thinking Conor Matthews, his cardio hasn't really been tested. He hasn't even been tested outside of the first round. We don't know what this guy is going to look like in the second and third round. I think we've seen a little bit more out of Francis Marshall. I like the wrestling, I like the grappling, I like the pressure that he's going to put on Conor Matthews as well. I don't see Francis Marshall as a guy that's getting finished in, in the first two minutes of the fight. Maybe that take could age very badly because Conor Matthews has destroyed every single one of his opponents. But I've just seen a little bit more out of Francis Marshall. I feel like I can trust the fact that he's going to wrestle and that he's going to grapple a little bit more than Conor Matthews. So... Give me Francis Marshall to win. I think he's going to wear on Matthews a little bit and wear him down over the first, over the second, and over the third round. I think he's going to end up with a late finish or a decision win. So I'm picking Marshall here. That is my official prediction. I'm just trusting him to outlast the first round and beat Connor Matthews after the first round ends there. And now we move on to the next fight. We've got Waldo Cortez Acosta taking on Danilo Suzart in the heavyweight division. If you guys aren't aware, the UFC really does need a little bit more of heavyweight talent. So I do believe that the winner of this fight has a very good chance of scoring a contract if they put on a very impressive performance. And speaking of impressive performances, I do feel like Waldo Cortez Acosta really welled a lot of people in his last win over Thomas Peterson, who was 5-0 at the time, and Thomas Peterson was a very hyped up prospect, I believe all five of his wins were in LFA, which is a very respected organization, and an organization which a lot of fighters fight in before they do end up making it into the UFC, but Wilder Cortez Acosta has fought some, some for some very good and respected MMA promotions, RUF in the Road to One series, uh, the winners uh, usually somehow end up on the one F F one FC one championship roster. He's fought for Bellator. He beat Mo Dereis, who has been fighting in PFL for a while, and then he fought Derek Weaver. Beat him pretty quickly in the second rounds, and then he took on Thomas Peterson. I believe he was a little bit of an underdog there. I picked Thomas Peterson to beat him there because. Thomas Peterson's a very good uh, prospect as well, and he's very, very good. He's only 27 years old, so I know that we're going to see him come back, but he looked really good against Thomas Peterson, and he ended up outlasting them there and picked him apart towards the end of the third round where he did end up getting the finish, which was a very impressive win. But if we look at Danilo Suzart's record as well, it's kind of been built up with with not the greatest levels of competition, I, I guess you could say. He does have a very good win over Benjamin Sahik, where he won the Aries FC uh, title there, which was, pretty, which was pretty cool. But apart from that, you know, he's been beating debuting guys, guys with losing records, you know, and kind of building up his record like that. But, you know, he's been looking pretty good. He went five rounds with Benjamin Sahik as well, which is interesting because I would not say that Danilo Suzart is a guy that does have great cardio. I would say that Waldo Cortez Acosta probably has the better cardio than Danilo Suzart, but Waldo Cortez Acosta, he comes from a boxing background. He does have a boxing career, a professional boxing career that isn't as successful as his professional MMA career, to be brutally honest, but he does have very good technical striking on the hand of Danilo Suzart. He throws good volume, but he doesn't throw very technical strikes. It's a lot of ho it's a lot of hooks. It's a lot of overhands. He's really trying to brawl with his opponent. Eduardo Cortez Acosta, on the other hand, for a heavyweight, I would say is a lot more relaxed and a lot more reserved. But Danilo Souza, he's going to be looking to brawl with Waldo Cortez Acosta. But I don't think that Cortez Acosta is going to get drawn into a brawl with Danilo Souza here. I do believe that Danilo Souza is going to use his box and use his more superior technical striking, is what I would call it, more, more, more superior technical striking, to win the first round and kind of outlast Danilo Souza. As I do believe Danilo Souza is going to slow down. And I'm expecting a second round or a third round knockout for Waldo Cortez Acosta. But... There's definitely a path to victory for Danilo Suzart here. He does have power on the hands. He's got six knockout wins in his career. Waldo Cortez Acosta has three. And that is when Waldo Cortez Acosta, he doesn't throw a lot of volume typically in his fight. So maybe when Danilo Suzart finds a, a, an opening for Waldo Cortez when he's not throwing many volume, maybe he could throw and blitz in with a combo or something wild like he, like he does tend to do. 
But I'm picking Wado Cortez a coaster. I believe I can trust him a little bit more, especially after that win over Thomas Peterson. I think that that win is going to age very good here, a very well aging win because Peterson is a very good prospect, and I do believe he is going to end up in the UFC at one point. And I believe that he's even a UFC caliber opponent here, where De Danilo Souza, in my opinion, really hasn't been fighting the highest level of competition apart from his last win over Benjamin Sahik, who was undefeated himself. But Cortez Acosta is the pick. I'm picking him to win by second or third round knockout here. I believe he's going to outlast Suzart, and Suzart's going to fade away towards the end, and Cortez Acosta is just going to keep on the volume, keep on the pressure, and I believe he's going to eventually find a finish. It's heavyweight MMA, though. Anything can happen. Suzart does have pop on the hands. Maybe we see Suzart land something, but I'm definitely... Pretty confident in Waldo Cortez Acosta. I really do like this guy as a prospect. I really liked Peterson as a cop, as a prospect, but I was familiar with Waldo before the Peterson fight, and he beat Peterson. You know, that's that's just a great win. I, I really cannot emphasize that enough. So I'm picking Waldo Cortez Acosta to finish with a TKO or a KO in the second or third round there. And we move on to the next one, which is definitely a potential fight of the night for Dana White's Contender Series Week 2. As uh, Billy Goff is always in very exciting fights, and Shimon Smitrisky as well does bring a, a game that definitely could upset Billy Goff's style. But let's just talk about both fighters. You know, Billy Goff is a guy that personally I'm pretty high, high on. You know, he's had a pretty interesting career. He fought Hobson Gracie Jr. in a fight which he was definitely meant to lose. Yeah, I think he was about a plus 500 un underdog there, and he ended up getting the TKO win. In the second round, and since then he's just been on a great win streak. You know, he under he beat the undefeated Martin Navis and very early in the first round, and then took on Gary Bellito Jr. for the CES welterweight title, and he won that one in the first round. Come back about a month later and took on Justin Sumter for the CES middleweight title there, and he beat Justin Sumter. Justin Sumter is a guy that has been on Dana White's Contender Series a couple of times. And uh, Billy Goff looked really good against him. He finished him in the second round uh, by TKO. Now, Shimon Smitrisky, if you guys are unfamiliar, he's bouncing back after a very quick Dana White's Contender Series loss to Mike Malott, where he was guillotine choked in the first round. I picked Mike Malott to win that fight, by the way, guys, just just, just saying. <laughs> but yeah, since then, Mike Malott looked really good. He got a KO winner in his UFC debut, so that loss hasn't aged too badly, although it was very, very early on. In, in the first round, but since then he has bounced back with a win over William Macario over at RCC, and now he's coming back again in Dana White's Contender Series, and what's so crazy to me is this, Shemil Smitrisky is, he's only 21 years old, and Billy Goff is only 24 years old, this is two really young prospects trying to make the name for themselves early on into their careers, which is awesome to see in my opinion, we're seeing two very young prospects, a lot of the times we see prospects, they're 28 years old, 29 years old, they're 30 years old, but, you know, you've got Billy Goff, who's 24, and Shimon Smitrisky, who's 21. These are two very, very young prospects. But Billy Goff, what he brings to this fight is he's very tough. He's very hard to finish. He's, he's quite durable, and he doesn't actually mind taking a shot if you're going to try and hit him on the feet. He's got really good ground and pound as well, and he does have pretty good wrestling. Uh, I would say it's, it's, it's actually somewhat underrated. It's, it's actually part of the game that he can lean to if he needs to. But I would probably give the wrestling and grappling advantage to Shimon Smitrisky here. The jiu-jitsu advantage will probably go the Smitrisky way. As he does, as he is a pretty good grappler himself, but the pick here is Billy Goff. I think that he's going to win the fight on the feet, and I think he's just going to do more damage overall throughout the fight. I think he's the better striker. I think he's potentially the faster striker as well of the two. He's definitely more powerful than Shimon here, and I don't want to be too critical about Smitrisky, but I feel like at the age of only 21 years old, you know, you come up on Dana White's Contender Series, you fall short. I feel like you should take just a little bit more time before jumping back in there, you know? He's 21 years old, he's got a he's got a huge career ahead of him, and I feel like maybe he probably could have taken a little bit more time off. With Billy Goff here, he's riding momentum, you know, and I think that's a very important part of MMA. As soon as he won on Bellator there and he, he got a taste of the spotlight, ever since then, man, he's just been undefeated and he's been looking really, really strong. And I think he's going to be able to beat Shimon Smitrisky, who's coming off one win, you know, he's coming into Dana White's contender series, like, oh, I've been here before and it didn't go my way, and he might be just a little bit second-guessing himself, you know, he hasn't, um, it's from, kind of from an outside point of view, I just don't feel like he's built that momentum or he's, or he's rebuilt that confidence, if you will, uh, you know, at only 21 years old, he's got a lot uh, more improving to do, and I feel like maybe he could have done that before the Dana White's contender series contract. 
Well, um, I'm very aware I could eat my words 100% because Shimon Petrisky is a very good fighter and I do respect him a lot. And a lot of people were picking him to beat Mike Malott, by the way. But I think that Billy Goff is just riding so much momentum right now. I think he hits so hard. He's so focused on what he wants. He's been in a training camp for about a couple of months now. He's not taking this this lightly at all. I'm sure Shimon Petrisky has the same sort of attitude. But I've seen Billy Goff training for about a couple of months now and uh, on his Instagram, and I know that he's focused on this fight, so I know that Billy Goff is going to come in ready, he's going to come in in shape, so I'm going to be picking Billy Goff here to win by TKO, I think the fight leaves the first round, I think both guys have very good looks in the first round, I do think that Smitrisky maybe gets a takedown, Billy Goff maybe hurts Smitrisky at one point, they both look very competitive in the first round, but as the fight goes on, Billy Goff's damage is just going to kind of build up, and they're going to end up taking over and I think he's going to get a TKO towards the end of the second round maybe even in the third round so give me Billy Goff to win uh, by TKO on this one I'm very excited for this fight Shimon Smitrisky has got definitely got a chance to victory here if he gets a takedown and tries to utilize his jiu-jitsu potentially he could lock up a sub or win a decision on top control but I'm picking Billy Goff to win I think he's got more finishing power on the feet so give me Billy Goff to win this one here and in the next one, you We Wouldn't Picks fans have been uh, blessed by the presence of my dog, Bear. She sometimes shows up to my videos, and she showed up to this one, my first video on the We Wouldn't Picks YouTube channel, and Bear has decided to join me. I didn't force her to come or anything, she just kind of jumped up here and decided to annoy me while I'm recording my videos, but here she is. She's a French Bulldog, she's about two years old. That's not really the point of the video, we're talking about Shannon Ross versus Vinicius Salvador. Hopefully my dog isn't too much of a nuisance in this one, but Shannon Ross, I'm picking him to win here. I just think he's a little bit better and a little bit more well-rounded than Vinicius Salvador in this, uh, in this fight. But Vinicius Salvador, 110% has the finishing ability to finish Shannon Ross here. I think he's got way more finishing ability than Shannon Ross does, as he's 33 years old as a flyweight coming in off for one and a half years um, on the sidelines, you know, that there's a little bit of a red flag in a way, I would say, but I'm definitely going to still be siding with Shannon Ross. I think he's just a little bit more technical than Vinicius. I think he's just a little bit more well-rounded. I think he's got the wrestling and the grappling in his back pocket to get the job done. But if we look at Vinicius Salvador, this guy... This guy's exciting, this guy's fireworks, you know, he finishes fights, he's got 12 wins by KO, 1 win by submission, he's got a 100% finish rate, his one loss to Jafel Philho has aged pretty well, because now Jafel Philho will be fighting on Dana White's Contender Series this year, which is pretty awesome, but, yeah man, just talk about Shannon Ross, you know, he's been on the, oh sorry guys, my dog, look at her, look at that, look at her. This is crazy. Uh, I'm really sorry. Um, my first video for We Want Picks and, and Bear has decided to be an absolute menace. She's normally a little bit more well behaved. But the fight's at 125, which is Shannon Ross's more natural weight class. And um, I'm picking him to win, as I said before. Sorry, I just got a little bit distracted. But yeah, he's been fighting over ACB and an eternal MMA, which is a lot of where the top Australian guys do tend to fight. His last loss was to Steve Orsic, who's meant to be fighting on Dana White's Contender Series this year. He recently beat Donovan Freelo and UAE Warriors, but that was back in 2020. He hasn't fought since then. He was meant to fight a couple of guys like Sean Etchell, who recently fought on road to UFC, and unfortunately he lost his fight very early in the first round. Vinicius Salvador, you know, he's recently been taking on good competition and then taking on not so good competition. Like, he's been beating debuting guys in the first round, and then he fights a good 9-3 and three guy, and then he fights another debuting guy, and then, you know, like, he's been just fighting up and down levels of competition, and he's the much younger fighter here. He's only 24 years old compared to Shannon Ross, who's 33, but I think that Shannon Ross is just a little bit better kind of everywhere. I don't think that he's going to get drawn into a brawl here, which is Vinicius Salvador's best chance at getting a win. I think that Shannon Ross kind of keeps it technical, throws a lot more volume than Salvador because that's what he does and he's got a much better gas tank in my opinion than Salvador as well. So I think that what Shannon Ross is going to do in this one here is he's going to fight at a pretty high pace in the first round. Salvador's going to keep up in the first round but then in the second round Shannon Ross is going to continue the high pace. He's not going to slow down and Vinicius Salvador is not going to be able to keep up. But I think that Shannon Ross just out gas tanks him and out volumes him for three rounds and wins a decision here. Uh, but I've got I've got notes here on this fight. Unfortunately, I got very distracted by my dog, who's an absolute menace. But uh, Shannon Ross has got really good leg kicks. He's also got really good volume, and he can get KO sometimes if he lands. But I just don't see him landing on Vinicius Salvador here, who does fight like he's got a crazy style. Vinicius Salvador is a very entertaining fighter. But I think what's going to happen here is I think that Shannon Ross is just going to out cardio Vinicius Salvador here, and. Um, 
yeah, it's just going to land more volume because Vinicius Salvador is a very hittable fighter. Shannon Ross, he throws a lot of volume, so something's going to land eventually. And I think Shannon Ross just outlands him uh, for three rounds of volumes and puts on a pace and wins that way. So, um, yeah, hopefully my dog calms down for the next one. <laughs> I'll see you in the next one. All right, so apologies for the last one. Um, <laughs> I got very distracted by my dog in the last one about Shannon Ross and Vinicius Salvador, and my dog is back, but she's found a toy, so she's a little bit more distracted now, so hopefully we're 100% on for the main event of the evening, the featured belt for Dana White's Contender Series 2022, Charlie Campbell versus Chris Duncan. If you guys don't know, Chris Duncan is making his return to the Contender Series after losing to Vyacheslav Borshev, by knockout about nine months ago but if you watch that knockout man that was that was pretty brutal Vyshlav Borshev puts him down with a brutal left hook and Chris Duncan doesn't get up for for a while man it was it was a pretty brutal knockout but he came back very quickly you know about five months four months after that he was fighting Jonathan Carlos and he won a decision there but what makes this main event or the featured belt so intriguing is this is this is a very similar matchup both of these guys uh, primarily kickboxers, both of these guys throw a lot of kicks, and both of these guys work the legs and work the body very well. In fact, both Charlie Campbell and Chris Duncan like to throw a lot of leg kicks in the first round, so it's going to be very interesting to see whose game kind of tops off um, each other's, you know, and I feel like maybe Chris Duncan would be a, a safe pick. Sorry, my dog has been an absolute menace. Um, Chris Duncan would be a very safe pick to win this one because Chris Duncan does also have wrestling in the back pocket. But, you know, Chris Duncan was taking Vyshlav Borshev down in the first round and Vyshlav Borshev was just getting right back up. And we saw Mark Casey take Vyshlav Borshev down and Vyshlav Borshev couldn't do anything from underneath whatsoever. So... I feel like if Vishla Borshev can stand up after getting taken down by Chris Duncan, then Charlie Campbell can as well. So I'm expecting Charlie Campbell to keep this fight on the feet, and it's going to be a kickboxing match for all 15 minutes or for how long the fight does end up lasting. And I'm picking Charlie Campbell, but I'm not that confident in it. I feel like both guys are just very similar fighters. Both guys are very evenly matched here. And I'm not too sure what the odds are because I'm recording this video before odds come out. But I would assume Chris Duncan would, would potentially be a slight favourite, or if not, maybe Charlie Campbell would be the first slight favourite. But the reason, the main reason why I do like Charlie Campbell is that Chris Duncan has kind of shown that he is very hittable in a lot of his fights, and Charlie Campbell potentially could capitalise on that with a knockout or just landing some really good damaging shots to win a decision over Duncan. So I feel like maybe Charlie Campbell could just utilize a weakness in Chris Duncan's game. But as I said, this is a very similar matchup in my personal opinion. I feel like Chris Duncan has got the wrestling in the back pocket, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. I think Charlie Campbell's going to be able to capitalize on the fact that Chris Duncan has been uh, pretty defensively uh, open. You know, he overextends on a lot of his shots. Vyshlav Borshev, although a very, very elite striker, in my opinion, was able to capitalize on that. Maybe Charlie Campbell can do the same. But if we look at both guys' records, they've both fought pretty good competition, you know. Charlie Campbell did lose pretty early on in his, on in his career. But since then, he's got a win over Nainoa Dung, who has made a return to Bellator a couple of times. And then won a few fights over at Cage Fury FC and Bellator again. And if we move on to Chris Duncan. And Chris Duncan's only losses against Vyacheslav Borshev, and he's fought very good levels of competition himself as well. He had multiple fights in Bellator, two fights in Bellator, and then since he lost to Vyacheslav Borshev, he took on a 6-4 and four guy in Jonathan Carlos. So both guys have been fighting good levels of competition. Both guys are, are potentially UFC ready, but this is the, the UFC lightweight division we're talking about, man. Potentially the most stacked division, high-level division in the entire roster, you know. The whole top 25 of the lightweight division is all killers, so you've really got to put on a really good performance, in my opinion, to impress Dana White and earn a contract. But I'm picking Charlie Campbell to win this one by knockout or decision. I just think that Duncan's quite hittable. You know, Duncan's definitely got a path to victory here, utilizing the wrestling um, as well as the striking and potentially winning a decision or, or getting a KO that way. But I'm thinking Charlie Campbell to win. I think he's going to get it done. It's a pretty risky pick, in my opinion. I know the majority of Tapology is picking him, but he's my pick, man. I do believe that Charlie Campbell is going to get the job done this, um, this well, next Tuesday. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's my picks man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, my first ever video for We Want Picks. You know, I feel like it started out pretty strong and then towards the end my dog decided to throw things out a little bit, but we've got to keep it professional, we've got to keep it calm. 
And uh, yeah, so that's all of my picks. Just to kind of go over the whole card again, I am picking Francis Marshall. I'm picking Waldo Cortez Acosta. I'm picking Billy Goff. I'm picking Shannon Ross, and I'm picking Charlie Campbell. So I'm picking the whole left side of the card. It just occurred to me. Hopefully that works out in my favor. And I'll see you guys in the next one in Dana White's Contender Series Week 3. As always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the We Want Picks channel. If you haven't already, please check out the WeWantPicks.com website. We've got articles up there. We've got blogs. We've got everything on there. There's so much on that WeWantPicks.com website. And uh, hopefully I can see you guys again another week for Dana White's Contender Series Week 3 and beyond. So as always, I'll catch you later. Uh, really happy to have made this video and hopefully you guys did enjoy it.